Hello, welcome to my channel Moretta Threads. I am Moretta, but you can call me Marta if you know how to roll your R's. So if you're one of my subscribers, first of all, thank you. Second of all, this is the discount code for the sewing pattern. It's linked below and it'll last the first 48 hours. So in today's tutorial, we are making my demi skirt. It is a mid-rise mini skirt, but it is a sewing pattern that I have already dropped a couple of months ago. And I also already did a tutorial for this as well. This is the original tutorial that I did. However, it may not be as useful now that I've updated the sewing pattern. And I updated the sewing pattern because I got a lot of feedback on my Etsy reviews that it ran too large. And because it ran too large, it didn't have enough smaller sizes. So I have now reconciled that. So if you're reading those reviews, now that you've bought the pattern, don't size up, you should be fine. Just use the size guide on the PDF one, page two, and you should be fine. Another update that I made with the sewing pattern is that it now also includes written and visual instructions. Those instructions are also timestamped to coincide with this video. The biggest difference between this video and those written instructions though, is that the written instructions are more so for someone who's intermediate. They probably have two sewing machines and so those instructions use two sewing machines. However, this tutorial is just going to use one sewing machine and we're going to do everything step by step together. So let's get into it. To begin, print page one and use the measuring box to measure one centimeter or one inch. If correct, you can print the remaining pages. From there, I like to stack them all in a bunch and then I remove the right hand border and then I remove the bottom hand border. You may need to pass through this a few times. Now there is a left and top hand border which we did not remove. So as you can see there, I have placed page one on top of page two. There is a small little buffer that you can use if you've cut away too much. From there, you're just going to make those little arrows connect to create an X and then do a little bit of sticky tape tabs on each of those X's. Sometimes things don't link up perfectly, which is why it's important to just do one tab at a time so that you can reconfigure things if you need to. Then once you've attached everything together, then you will go in with the longer lengths of tape. And then you're just gonna cut out the sewing pattern. Make sure that you use the size key in PDF one, page two to pick your size so that you can make the right skirt. So because I am doing design option A, all of the sewing pattern pieces are cut out on the fold. So ensure that your fabric is placed on a fold and then cut it out. So the first thing we're going to work on is the back panels for both the outer and lining layers. So I'm just mapping out my darts on both layers and now I am ready to close those darts. Now I'm going to close up the darts on the lining fabric first. As you can see here, I am grabbing both the top and bottom thread and pulling that through because I want some really long tails here. The reason for that is um, I can't back tack on this kind of fabric because it's too thin. So I just grab those tails and close it shut. Whereas for the outer layer of fabric, it's much thicker and I can back tack it. I'm then going to press out these new darts. So with the lining, I am pressing those darts in. And then for the outer layer of fabric, I am pressing, pressing those darts out. So with the darts done, we're now going to clean up the sides of our sewing pattern pieces. Usually here, this is where you would overlock or surge those side pieces, but obviously we're assuming that you only have one machine. So here I am just sampling on some scrap fabric, what kind of zigzag stitch width and tension I would like. And this is what I landed on. I recommend you maybe practice as well before you actually do it to your proper panels. So from there, I picked what I liked and then I did a zigzag stitch on all four of the panels on the left and right sides. And this is what you'll be left with. Now I prefer my zipper to be placed on the right hand side, which is why I have my back panel on the left and my front panel on the right. So the majority of the skirt's seam allowance is done at 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm just marking that on the skirt so that I can get the right placement with my zipper. Now you're going to use an invisible zipper, preferably 18 centimeters or seven inches. Mine was a little bit too long, so I added that pin in the bottom. And then on the top, I always cut away a little. 
I cut away just enough so that the very top of the zipper has a little bit of an excess of one centimeter and that's because the seam allowance for the top of the skirt is one centimeter. So place your zipper down good side facing up grab that left panel and flip it to the left and put a pin in it to the top and then the same thing with the right pick that right side up and rotate it once to the right and put a pin in to secure it. I actually forgot to do it here but sometimes when I'm struggling to place a invisible zipper in I like to unzip it and then get my iron out and press it flat so that it's easier to install. Now if you have an invisible zipper foot it is so so easy to pop one of these zippers in however I'm going to assume that you don't and so we're just going to use a normal zipper foot. So that is one pass done and if you have a look here I didn't actually get close enough and so I'm going in for a second time and I'm getting much much closer this time and then I finish off with a back tack so you can see my two little efforts there and that it was worth obviously doing a second pass because I was able to get a little bit closer. So now with that done, we're going to do the other zipper. So just make sure you change uh, the side of the zipper foot that we're on. So with my first pass, I'm mostly just trying to make sure that I am keeping in line with the 1.5 seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch. And then I go in again and do a second pass and get much, much closer so that this is clean as possible. So obviously I have used a contrast zip here. So I'm just checking my work. And if this was the same color zip in the same fabric, you wouldn't be able to notice it and we would be happy. So because I'm happy with my zip, now I need to close off the side seams on this outer layer of the skirt. So I just pinch together the layers of fabric and make sure that that zip is lifted out of the way. And I add my pins on that side and then I do the same thing on the other side. So from where we last did our stitch work with the zipper, you're going to want to go maybe one centimeter up from that from where we start stitching you can also see there that I nudged my needle a little bit to the right so that I could get as close as possible I'm holding that zipper out of the way and I am making sure that I am doing 1.5 centimeter seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch for my imperial system people So if you turn that side now inside out, you can see where we join and why it's so important that we get as close to as possible where the original stitch work was. So now that I am finished with that invisible zipper, I can just move back across to my normal sewing foot and now I'm going to close off the other side seam, the same seam allowances. You're then just going to open up those seams that we've made and press them nice and flat and do that to both sides. So once you've done that, you're going to grab the back panel of your lining and face it good side facing up. Then grab the front panel and make that good side facing down and close the right hand side with some pins. You're going to stitch close that side seam and remember to back tack. You then are going to open up that side seam similar as before and now we can attach this to our outer layer of fabric. So lay out your fabric the same as me, good side facing up of the outer layer and then open up your lining and make those side seams that we've created connect. Grab a little pin if you like and just pop that right through that seam so you know that they're perfectly matched up. There along the perimeter you're going to add some pins and just make sure that those darts are lining up nicely as well. So we're going to stitch close the top now. The seam allowance for this bit is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Go slowly and make sure that those darts are facing the right way from when we first initially ironed them. So with the top perimeter done, now we need to adhere that lining to the side seam of where the zipper is. So I'm just getting that into place. It's all lining up nicely and I'm just gonna pop some pins through. So you are now going to place your zipper foot 
back onto the sewing machine because we do need to get reasonably close to this little channel. That's where the zipper teeth are. So we're not gonna get as close as we did when we were attaching it to the outer layer because it's likely to have too much bulking there. You don't wanna do that. Close enough, maybe half a, half a centimeter out would be a good distance. So I'm just making sure that the lining and the outer layer are matching up nicely as I sew down. And I am just going to sew down as far as I can. It's probably going to be two centimeters up from where I actually did it on when I was doing the outer layer. So same thing again, I'm doing the other side now and you won't be able to get too far down because the little zipper pull out will be in the way. So you'll probably see here where I stop. Now I'm just going to sew right over these teeth in a little diagonal line because I am going to cut this segment away. That is for later when we turn the inside garment out, we want to remove that bulking. And I just do the same thing again on the other side. Make sure you're sewing right on the edge of those teeth. So I'll show you what that looks like now once we turn it out. You can see there we've got the edge and it's quite clean because we removed that excess bulk. So if we close that zipper up and have a look at the skirt, you can see here these two little sides here have to be attached. So we're doing the same thing that we did earlier when we were closing them up. Just add your pins in and make sure that that tail is pulled away change the size of the foot and do your best to get as high up as possible. You won't be able to go to the very top. Um, you may be one or two centimeters down from where the stitches actually link up. I know that sounds confusing, so I will show you in one moment what that looks like, which is this. So we've got a two centimeter gap. That gap is normal, it's totally fine. And with the skirt uh, inside out, if you have a look here, you'll be able to pop your fingers in. There's a little gap, totally normal. So now the next thing that we're going to want to tackle is the top of the skirt. You can see here, this is the lining. And if you're wearing this, the lining could easily pop through. So we're going to secure it down. So that's our seam allowance. And I have pushed the seam allowance up and then I need to secure it. This is a previous example that I'm pointing to. You won't be able to get that close to the zip because the zip's in the way. So have a look at what I'm doing here. I'm getting as close as I can to the zip. I'm making sure that that seam allowance that's underneath is facing right so that I am securing it to the lining. And I'm just going to do that all the way down and as you can see there, I got as close as possible to the zip and then you can just press that nice and flat with your iron. So I'm just going to bring in a different skirt sample that I made earlier for my written and visual instructions. If you see here, I have done an overlocked serged edge. So with this tutorial, again, we're assuming that you don't have an overlocker and you only have this machine. So in that case, you could do the same thing that we did earlier, which was zigzag stitch the hem and then fold it once and do a straight stitch to secure it. However, if you want a slightly cleaner finish, you could do a double folded hem and then that would conceal all of your stitch work. So it might be worth adding a couple of centimeters to the seam allowance of the hem if you want to finish it slightly differently. Also sidebar, this is what the partial lining option looks like. It's just a little bit easier to do and an option you can take. So that is the end of the tutorial. I really hope that was helpful. If you have any questions at all, comment below and I will get back to you. But outside of that, I really hope you enjoy the sewing and good luck.